Well, let's discuss this further with Andy Brown of the Sports Integrity Initiative. Thanks for coming on to the programme, Andy. Um, OK, let, let's start with uh, what, what's been happening. It's believed that almost every athlete has been cleared um, after all the question marks of the McLaren report implicating widespread doping. Um, how much was this expected, Andy? Um, well, it, it wasn't expected so much. I mean, um, and it's important to clarify a few things first. There were um, 724 athletes implicated in the um, McLaren report, um, the vast majority of which were Russian. There were only about 12 who weren't. So this isn't um, that every, every Russian has been cleared. This is the cases, cases in progress to date. So it's since the evidentially evidence was translated in May 2017 up until now. That's, that's what this is actually dealing with. So it's not dealing with every single Russian case. Um, it's easy to read it that way, but that isn't the case. It's dealing with, with the cases that have been processed by the international federations to date, which WADA have then said only one of them can be brought forward as an ADRB. Yeah, I mean, the figures are high. If we look at the McLaren report, how likely is it that uh, Richard McLaren will come out with any reaction to these latest uh, revelations? Um, a lot of discrepancies, well, it seems, doesn't it, in his report? Yeah, well, I think there has to be some sort of statement of clarification from, from WADA, um, specifically, really, in, in uh, relation to the number of samples that are still held at the, um, the Moscow Laboratory. I mean, it initially said that um, it couldn't access a lot of the samples that were held there because of an investigation by the Russian Investigative Committee, which is still going on. Um, however, it's said that these samples, um, it's now said that these samples have been provided, the ones that are originally seized, to the international federations. Um, however, a number of samples are also destroyed. So how many samples have been provided to the international federations to work with is actually a key question, because you need evidence to bring forward an anti-doping rule violation. So you need um, an adverse in analytical finding from the urine sample. Um, so it's crucial how many samples have been handed over to the IS to analyse um, from the McLaren report. That information needs to be clarified. Yeah. What we do know is that three Russian cyclists have filed a lawsuit against WADA. Um, how damaging do you think these latest figures are for the organisations if the athletes do indeed win their case? Um, well, I think there could certainly be more cases brought forward. I mean, as, as your reporter rightly said in her summer, summing up of this, um, it wasn't only the guilty athletes that were um, implicated in all of this. Innocent athletes were also banned from the Rio Games and the Paralympics. Um, and I, I've got a particularly pertinent case involving a Russian volleyball player, um, Alexander Markin, who was prevented from going to Rio. Um, however, he was given meldonium by his coach on the same date as a US colleague, Maxwell Holt, who um, went on to represent the US in Rio. And um, the US beat Russia in the bronze medal match in volleyball. So there we are. Um, people like that have a, a very valid case that they were unfairly treated by all of this. Yeah, and that's just one case, yeah. Andy. Well, we've run out of time. Andy Brown of the Sports Integrity Initiative, thanks very much for uh, giving us your thoughts on this issue. Thanks for coming to the programme.